Well, thank you, Chris, for spending your time today to uh, discuss um, an issue uh, issues relating to supply chain and, in particular, uh, lean continuous improvement. Can you start by providing a brief background of yourself? Yeah, so I've I've been in supply chain for the last uh, six years. Um, I've spent uh, uh, two years uh, in the automotive space, so doing continuous improvement projects uh, in the outbound distribution. So from warehouse to dealerships within the uh, uh, within the South African uh, and Southern African region, uh, basically based out uh, at the Nissan production plant in. In, in Pretoria, South Africa. Uh, I, for the last four years I've been with a, a company called uh, Super Group uh, where I've been championing a lot of the lean continuous improvement initiatives which has been, you know, been involved in the turnaround of, uh, of operations using the, the lean continuous improvement methodology as a sort of a change management, uh, uh, change management tool and also to, to, to right the ship so to speak. Um, the we've seen some some significant results as as a result of you know implementing the, these tools and techniques under the the lean the lean banner. And yeah, so I've presented a number of lean conferences, uh, the turnaround specifically of a, of an FMCG business, um, just really by implementing the tools and techniques um, used to sort of merge the systems that support the supply chain and the people, so to get people to to use the tools and technologies more efficiently and more effectively to produce results for the customer. Thank you, and my first question is, what is continuous improvement and how is it implemented? Well, lean, uh, continuous improvement really is about creating a culture within a business of, of continuous improvement. So looking to, to, to improve every aspect of the business, not just from a financial perspective, but from a, from a process perspective from a, and from a people perspective. And just really looking at every, getting people within the, the business to look at their different parts of the business and see how they can improve on a, on a day-to-day -day basis, and we really do this through things called, um, you know, the tools. So your team performance areas. Mm -hmm. So really setting up key performance indicators for each and every team within the business. Also providing visibility of all the key measures, but also providing key visibility of the specific processes. So, so really getting people uh, to understand, um, you know the roles that they that they play and the different tasks that they need to complete on a day-to-day -day basis and to understand the different interchanges that take place so that the whole team understands the end-to-end -end process rather than just a one specific role player and by focusing on the whole end-to-end -end supply chain you can then you can then improve the service delivery to the customer and where have you seen success with a turnaround situation? Essentially, uh, in, 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 in a number of different, uh, so in the FMCG business, so you know, we, we were sitting at a stage where we had, from a South African RAND perspective, we had 80,000 RANDs worth of uh, outstanding proof of deliveries. We managed to reduce that down to 5,000 RAND. So it's basically, we had $10 million, if, if we convert it as 8 to 1. $10 million with the outstanding POD sitting at customers. And just by implementing these tools and techniques, we're able to reduce that down to, to 5,000 Rand or, you know, less than $1,000. Uh, and we've also seen uh, signif significant improvements um, in, in uh, technology businesses where we were able to just to improve service delivery to customers. So we were rolling out projects across the globe for a company called uh, well, BOC Lindy Group. And essentially, you know, we, through the lean process, we, we implemented standard operating procedures. We mapped business processes. So when we were dealing with other partners around the globe, we, we would send them standard operating procedures, send them process maps 
just to ensure that we're on the same page when it comes to resolving specific issues. And uh, by, resolve, by, by being on the same page, we found that problems were, were solved uh, in a much shorter time space. Uh, also using things like, uh, like uh, pro problem, sol uh, problem solving methodology. So is to structure the whole process around resolving a problem. And that, that produced significant results. Uh, we've also seen it in a car, in a, in a vehicle uh, fleet rental business. So renting of, of, of trucks, um, refrigerated trucks, um, light trucks, uh, more your, your, your one tonners through to your eight tonners. Uh, just really, you know, dealing with end customers on ad hoc type of rentals. We've seen some significant improvements uh, in visibility within, within that space. And can you uh, talk about who needs continuous improvement? I believe every business needs uh, continuous improvements. I think uh, in today's global marketplace, you know, you cannot afford to be to to not have continuous improvements because every business has waste or is not is uh, no business is ever lean enough. Uh, every business needs to be trying to, to sweat their assets as much as possible. And I think with lean continuous improvement, a lot of the waste that we see um, is actually not visible. It's the waste that you see when someone has to walk through to, to, to a, 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 a fax machine, has to walk 40 meters to a fax machine to, to fax every day. It's about bringing that fax machine to his specific desk so that you know, he can finish his work at 3 o'clock in the afternoon rather than uh, working till 7 o'clock at night because you know, a lot of the time he's spending is actually walking to a fax machine to make a fax or to make a printed copy. And thank you, Chris, for sharing your insights on uh, continuous improvement.